Welcome, my name is Mauricio Muñoz. I'm the coordinator for the Master Design Projects of Industrial Engineering and Management. And today I will talk about the proposal and the process on preparing such a deliverable, one of the first ones, for your trajectory. First of all, you need to find an interesting problem, a problem in the industry, a problem that has complexity and that certainly has a problem owner. When thinking about the problem, you need to define concepts, key concepts that will be part of your system, that certainly will show complexity, innovation, and contribution. Also, we deal with all sorts of problems in the Master Design Project. We see all sorts of, of, of companies and situations that have to be solved. So please take into account the well-defined abbreviations. Take into account that every system is different and every problem is different. You need to think about the audience. You need to think about the, the committee also. Now, when you define problems, sometimes you say that in the organization or company, there is just a lack of knowledge and that certainly doesn't say so much. Also, sometimes when you talk about problems, there, there is a lack of perception. It seems that there is a lack of perception uh, or there is just a, a, it's just a, a, a perception issue. And also, you should take into account that there are no well-defined key concepts at the very beginning. So these are ill-posed problems. And this is what we don't expect in the first part of the, of the proposal. We will see where the complexity is. We want to see precisely why this is interesting and why nobody has solved it in the past. But also, it's not only about solving a practical problem in a company or organization. We also need to take into account the scientific relevance. You need to bring rigor. Think this, you are aiming for a master in sciences. And the fact that you are solving a practical problem in a company doesn't mean that you should not bring rigor. You can always find journal papers that have addressed similar issues in the past. Journal papers that provide already a set of methods on, or, and a set of tools. Let's say that you will make use of linear pro programming or let's say you will use nonlinear regressions or descriptive end uh, simulations. You can use mathematical, uh, mathematical theories in order to address your issue. But also you should talk about not only those methods, but you should talk about also about the tools. Are you going to make use of any logic or MATLAB or Python? Or are you going to use um, SuperPro or Aspen? So what is precisely the tool? And how this tool and this method is connected to the journal papers that you have found and how those tools, methods and journal papers are actually connected to the problem that you have previously defined. This is what we call scientific relevance or the scientific field. We don't expect a recapitulation of design science, of the cycles of Hefner. We don't expect a recapitulation of the Van Aken cycles or the Van Aken cycle. We understand that those cycles are to allocate your problem within a design science in terms of rigor, rigor relevance, or, or, or design itself. We understand that you are dealing with a problem solving cycle. But certainly for the proposal phase, that doesn't tell so much. We want you to explore real methods and tools already published by engineers and scientists and it's quite relevant for you to bring such an information in a bibliography. And so you need to talk about this in the second part of the proposal phase. Now, the business case and the business context. Here, what we would like to see is the financial urgency for the organization or company. What if the problem is not, what is the project is not executed, right? We would like to see figures and sometimes you will have issues of confidentiality. 
Sometimes you will see that the company doesn't want to disclose these figures of these financial urgencies. Because you haven't signed any confidentiality agreement, there is no NDA, so they are just waiting for the proposal to be approved. So this is a conundrum. If that's the case, then we encourage you to find key literature with a similar case, where actually you can justify the, the business case. We understand that because of the confidentiality, you will, you will face the uncertainty with figures. But certainly you need to be convincing, you need to convince the committee that it's not only a complex problem, it's not only scientific relevant, but also it's, 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 uh, it's relevant for the business. Because recall, we are aiming for a project that is in the field of industrial engineering and management. Now, of course, we expect figures. When you mention that this is just a loss of market share, that doesn't say so much. Uh, and sometimes even the proposals are aiming to projects that are more connected to the faculty of business of economics and business, instead of the faculty of, of um, science and engineering. So this is why we consider that complexity, scientific fields, and the business case should, be, should have a coherent story. Now, the fourth element that is quite important for the proposal phase is the system. When we talk about system, a system description is in terms of the inputs and outputs. It's in terms of their subsistence and interrelations. Each subsisting, of course, we have an input and an output, and there are, there are interconnections among those subsystems. This is one way to justify complexity. And once you have this diagram, certainly you need to prepare a block diagram or a diagram that represents your system. You certainly need to, to mark your scope. Where in the complexity of the system it's your project allocated. This is what we desire to see. This is what we like to see. Nonetheless, sometimes we obtain this. We obtain a graphic description of your project, or we have a graphic description of a to-do list, or even an organizational chart of the company. That's not precisely the system that we are looking forward to see. We, sometimes you aim for a decision toolbox, and then you draw a block that says decision toolbox. Actually, that's the outcome of your project. And certainly that should not be part of the system. The system description should be also connected to the complexity of the problem. In this, in, 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 this is meaning the so-called storyline that should be coherent. And I'll talk about that in a second. Now, what what are you going to deliver? So what is this aim output of your project? Is it an experimental setup? Is it a pilot? Is it a simulated environment with the current situation and the new situation after you have a implement, an implementation of your solution? Let's say a virtual implementation of your solution. How are you going to validate such an artifact? Recall that this is a design project, so we expect to see a design and your story here should be also coherent, meaning that if you plan to use console multiphysics, it means that you will have a simulation towards the end, which means that your simulations will tell you whether uh, or not your physical system will solve the, the, the problem. Now, I have talked about methods, tools, and, connect, and it's connected to the problem. So this, this is the coherence that we are uh, looking forward to seeing. Now, sometimes you say that you will provide recommendations. Sometimes you say that you will solve the problem. And you claim that that's your artifact. And certainly that's not enough. Sometimes even you say that, that these recommendations, that this solution, sometimes you even talk about the report, that the output of your project is a report. Of course, we expect to see a report towards the end. But we are more interested in the evaluation of what's inside of the report. What's precisely the design? And how is this design being validated? Besides those five elements, 
There are additional elements that we normally see every week when preparing proposals. One of them is data. Now you talk about data. You say that you will use data, uh, or that you need to gather the data, or that you need to generate the data. Uh, and sometimes this concept is very vague. Com what is the complexity of the data? The data. What is the nature? And so what is the availability? Are you gonna really going to, to generate the data? If so, how are you going to generate the data? Or maybe your system describes 10 different types of sensors, or maybe one type of sensor, and then you have thousands of sensors in your system. And the sensors are providing enough data connected to a more centralized system. And so you will analyze this data because it's there. Sometimes uh, companies uh, depend on the data coming from a third party, which is also valid. It's a bit dangerous, but valid. And so you need to be very clear about this data flow and this data treatment. And data, it's, uh, well, it's expected, uh, a full description, a good description, all over your proposal, in all the sections of the proposal. The bibliography towards the end of the proposal, it's also expected. Please make use of a, of a, of a style, APA, Harvard, IEEE, Chicago, it doesn't matter. Choose one style and make use of that style. It should be all over the document. Mostly, we expect to see those key journal papers, key and representative journal papers in the scientific fields. But sometimes you need to bring them back to understand the complexity of the problem, to understand the complexity of your system. So certainly bibliography is expected. A proposal that has no bibliography it shows already, or is, is part of a red flag. It's a must. Now, your storyline, I mentioned this briefly before. Your storyline should be engaging, coherent, cohesive. If you are talking about um, the, 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 for instance, the implementation, or you're talking about of a bottleneck of cheese production in Frisland Campina, of course, then there is complexity with this cheese, uh, this cheese production. There is, there is, um, there is uh, data coming from sensors, or you even need to generate your model with Aspen, for instance, to say, to say something. So we need to see the coherence all over the proposal, always connected to this complex problem. And certainly the problem has to be relevant. And you write in a style. Please, before sending the proposal to the committee, please ask someone to read it for you. There should be a veracity here. So if you're talking about some type of sensors, you need to believe in the story. You need to believe in the type of data. You need to believe in your system and your storyline. As I mentioned before, it has to be coherent. And finally, the word counting. It's very difficult indeed to to talk about the problem system, to talk about the scientific fields, the artifact, the business case in a thousand words. It's very difficult. So you need to carefully think about each word. Of course, we don't take into account titles. We don't take into account the text of the bibliography towards the end. But certainly, this is one of the must because sometimes we even have, we have to read 10 proposals per week. And so, what I mean here is that less is more. So you need to carefully think about the wording. And we only count the wording, of course, inside of the, inside of the boxes of the form. If you have questions, if you have already a project, you have found already a project in a company, and you would like to discuss it before preparing your proposal, you can always contact me. And we can always have a short meeting, a brief discussion, about about the complexity we can always we can always uh, find a way so feel free to contact me please and thank you for your attention